Okay, so in a triumph of liberal internationalism and cooperation, a Chinese woman from Canada living in America apparently is taking money from Russia. So the DOJ unseals these indictments last week of two Russian nationals who gave nearly $10 million to a Tennessee-based company with the tagline, Fearless Voices Live Here. And despite not being named in the indictment, we can deduce that they're talking about Tenant Media, which is a company founded by Lauren Chen and her husband, Liam Donovan. And this is a pretty big deal because that's a decent amount of money in this industry and the people they brought on. These are pretty big names, people like Tim Poole, Lauren Southern, Dave Rubin, Benny Johnson. And so if these allegations are true, then the people who they brought on and their employees have all been deceived. And frankly, the left has been handed a pretty decent victory right before the election, which we'll talk about. And so from the indictment, we know, and also the statements that these people have put out since, the contributors were all unaware of these company ties to Russia today, to the Russian government, and that they were supposed to be apparently promoting Russian interests in America, along with some other things. So Tim Pool puts out a statement saying that he had no idea he was deceived. All the work that uh, was done for Tenant by his company was done independently with no editorial oversight. These are all just allegations. And Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, Lauren Southern, Matt Christensen, uh, Taylor, the fella, Hanson, they all put out statements basically saying the same thing. But neither Chen nor her husband, who were both aware, as shown in the indictment, of the Soviet connection have made comments at this time. So there's a lot of questions floating around. Lauren's articles are being scrubbed from Great Britain News. Apparently she was let go from The Blaze, which was hosting her podcast. And people are really just dragging her through the mud over these allegations, which maybe is deserved. I suppose, you know, time will tell. But I just want to say up front, I've met her a few times. She's always been very nice to me. And so I hope that these allegations are proven false. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Lauren, I'm sorry to use your face for content. You know how the game is played. You use your face for content. I use your face for content. Let's all just set our stones down here before something gets broken. And unfortunately, she's not even here to defend herself. It seems that YouTube actually went ahead and just deleted her channel along with with a few other channels, which she owns, um, just doing like movie reviews or something. And even though she herself has not been indicted, again, these are all just allegations, still just, you know, deleted. There's no due process, no anything. Taylor, the fella, Hanson, same thing. His channel's gone, even though the indictment literally exonerates him and the other commentators and says, if anything, they were the victims because they were deceived if these allegations are true. But with the indictment, with the government going after this whole thing, as much as I want to think it's like a familial double standard kind of thing, like you can hit your little brother, but if someone else hits your little brother, well, then they get to taste pennies for the next six weeks. Like, hey, stop. Only we get to sigh up Americans. Only we get to propagandize and spread misinformation information. But if you do it, then it's bad because your flag is different and it, it's not the same. It's like, okay, this is definitely just an opportunistic move for pretty much all involved parties, as we'll explain. But in general, obviously, the interests of Americans obviously have not been represented in decades. So it's a very easy scapegoat to take this one specific isolated instance of foreign money and present it like, well, this is the whole problem. This, I hate when this happens. This is the problem with politics. No, actually, I, I don't think the government has a problem with this at all. Generally, Generally speaking, again, like we said with Russia, it's a little bit different, even more so given the nature of this content. But yeah, the indictments unsealed by the DOJ don't actually name Lauren or her husband, Liam, but we know pretty much matter of factly that they are who the file refers to as founder one and founder two. And more of what we know from the 36 page indictment is that the alleged crimes were committed by two Russia Today employees who steered nearly $10 million through various shell companies to presumably Lauren Chen and her husband, Liam Donovan. Uh, Lauren's been making content since around 2016 under the name Roaming Millennial. She began working for Russia Today in 2021. Liam, her husband, also worked for a company, I think it was a German company owned by Russia Today. Essentially, when Lauren was working at RT, she met these two Russians, and then in early 2022, when RT shut down its operations in America because of the whole Russia-Ukraine conflict popping off and the subsequent American sanctions against Russian money, the indictment is suggesting that in order to continue its operations in America, these two Russian nationals basically set up a bunch of shell companies and other entities to funnel money into what became Tenant Media, which was started by Lauren Chen and her husband, Liam Donovan. The idea being, of course, to continue having influence in American politics without it being under the name Russia Today. Hence the money laundering charges and the failure to register as a foreign agent charges. So they get this company started. They got the funding for it from these contacts that they made while working for these companies, which are 
government entities. They failed to disclose this under the FARA Act, FARA Act. Technically, they received laundered money, again, all allegedly, and then I guess they lied to the commentators working for them about the origins of the money. And the indictment reveals to us that when one of the commentators actually asked where this money was coming from, the Russian people swiftly put together this like fake resume and profile for some French businessman who I guess was philanthropic and who was also a complete fabrication, like this guy didn't exist. So the whole operation was rotten from day one, and the Russians spent like $10 million to get 16 million views on YouTube uh, in a year, which is pretty much unsurprising if you know how government money works. Communism takes yet another L. State media BTFO'd yet again. And that's pretty much what we saw in 2016 as well. You know, like all, there's all this talk about Russian misinformation or disinformation. It was getting very low engagement, despite it being very expensive for the involved parties. Certainly not high enough engagement to swing an election, but of course they cannot legitimize the Trump ascendancy, which again, we'll talk more about later on. But following the indictment, Taylor, the fella Hansen, puts out a statement saying that Tenant is shutting down, its operations are ceasing, and Farah covers basically any interaction with a foreigner, but usually those laws are not strictly enforced. But again, given that Russia is sanctioned, that makes things a little bit different. More importantly, this whole situation presents a very ripe opportunity for the regime. My understanding is that there could be prison time, fines, asset forfeiture, things of that nature. And obviously, as a loyal American patriot, I'm not in love with people taking money from foreign interests, so, you know, don't do that. But putting this story into the context of that phenomenon occurring in American politics, which it obviously does, and further, just like our top 50 problems, I think that people might be getting a little uppity because they have their own interests in consideration when doing so, which we will explain. But my problem with Lauren Chen has a lot more to do with that, you know, if these allegations are true, then she's damaged the livelihoods and reputations of some very good people and has handed a very powerful victory to the left before this election, which we will discuss. But also, perhaps separately from that whole thing, she was counter-signaling President Trump before the election, which, as an American whose family has been here for over 300 years, yeah, I feel as though I have a pretty big stake in the results of this election. It sort of rubs me the wrong way when people claim to be on our side, but then they go out of their way to counter-signal President Trump leading up to this election, let alone in ways which are just ridiculous in themselves, frankly, um, and maybe even a bit more offensive considering that you're not even an American in the first place. I mean no disrespect when I say that, but that's the reality of our situation. But I've said, and I do believe, that anybody who's doing this right now is an enemy. And I've explained why at length. I have, and I will further address the popular criticisms of Trump at length, especially in the coming weeks, but it's all just stupid and unhelpful. And like, frankly, it's reckless and it's irresponsible, but she's been around for a while. She's not here to defend herself. And I have no interest in, you know, assigning some motive for all of that, even if it's just like a misread of our political situation. I think that people want to give themselves permission to have problems with people for more acceptable reasons, reasons that maybe step on fewer toes. Like, oh, well, Brandon DOJ said this, or she took money from this. Sorry, I really, I just don't care about about that really right now. Like the only thing that matters right now is getting Donald Trump back in office. That's our two month timeline. We can sort the rest out later. Like, you know, there are a lot of people who are promoting bad messaging, who associate with bad people who are themselves bad. They're bad actors, but they're attacking Lauren right now because she did a freaking foreign money. Oops, you did a freaking Russian money. You can't do that. And it's like, okay, putting aside the election, which again, that's the only thing that matters right now for the next two months. She put out a lot of very good content. She has for many years. She's pretty solid on the issues. I think there are a lot of people who don't like her for that reason. They don't like her for a lot of her opinions. And they're seeing an opportunity right now to basically like take out a radio tower and consolidate and reaffirm their own presence and just write her off with this being the excuse. And anyone who knows her will tell you that this is like totally out of left field. This seems nothing like her. And she may very well be being used by the government because they need this right now to harm Trump and to harm the right. And you know, Sean Fitzgerald, he just put out a video explaining how Lauren herself could actually be innocent. So go check that out if you're interested in the finer details, if you want the, uh, the erm actually perspective on the situation. You know, Sean, you shout me out, I hit you back a couple years later, we're square. Uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about the big boy stuff. We're gonna talk about foreign interests in America here. So uh, yeah, you know, I will say this did make more sense now, like knowing, because when they announced, oh, Tenant Media, I remember thinking to myself, like, why do we you know, need this? Who is this for? All these people coming together. They're all kind of doing their own thing. They're not going to be collaborating together directly on content. Like, what's the point of making, you know, another network? Now, knowing that they just had like $10 million to work with, it's like, okay, yeah, you know, it doesn't have to make sense. Just kind of throw something together. You got that much money to work with. So, again, the talent they signed did not know about these allegations, according to the indictment. Um, and their statements so far seem to corroborate that. So, as of now, people are saying uh, that Lauren 
Warren and her husband should be charged with treason and they need to go to prison for the rest of their lives. You know, everyone always seems to develop this like real sense of patriotism and loyalty to America when the federal government decides to go after one of their political opponents. Democrats, of course, always do this. Neocons are doing it now. It's just another day ending and why. So we'll start off by saying that whatever you think the foreign money is floating around in politics, it's like 10 times that. And please, no, I, I know what number is in your head. I have factored for that in my assessment. There's also some equation that should be drawn that's something like it's 10 times easier to get funding for something that's going to be like one-tenth as functional as it should be. It's probably one-tenth as easy to get funding for something that should function as it should, something like that. You know, I had a friend tell me one time, like, man, we just, we don't have a donor class built up. It's why I understand why people end up taking money from these Zionist evangelicals. You know, hey, hey. But when we talk about foreign money, people really want to get mad at that because it gives them this excuse to be like tribal again and pretend that we're actually a country again. But in real terms, any anti-American money is foreign money. Like this is what democracy looks like. Literally, it's just a bunch of competing interest groups wrestling for control of America's destiny, paid for by the American taxpayer, who all have different reasons to hate the American taxpayer. So when you say foreign money, it's almost like outdated language. Like what you think you're saying is money that is from non-Americans, which is bad because it's implied to be hostile to, or at least insufficiently compatible with the interests of American people. But there are actually plenty of American, or maybe I should say citizens of the United States rather, um, who do that as well, just fine. So as globalization increases, what we actually mean when we say foreign money is not the same. And my understanding is that foreign money is bad because it goes against the interests of the native people, but so does like basically everything else that happens. So, okay, where do we draw the line? Being a trader can't just mean taking foreign money anymore. It would be far more helpful to define a trader as anyone acting against the interests of American people, working against Donald Trump, for example, making it harder for him to get reelected. That's a greater crime than whatever the DOJ is mad about. Likewise, giving money to someone who purchases children, that's a greater crime than where that money came from in the first place. But these are just my opinions. I'm not going to get all freaking worked up about this, but I'll explain why. You know, we're going to talk about the foreign interests, foreign money, American sovereignty, American interests, all that stuff, how these things work. But a little inside baseball, uh, every single time people get involved in, you know, what's going on with like other commentators, it's because of personal grudges, expanding market share, something like that. Like, well, I'm the real one. You have to listen to me. And it's like, yeah, yeah, listen to him. It's like, okay. So you're going to be seeing a lot of that. Uh, not for me though, because I'm actually, okay, whatever. Uh, next bit. So yeah, the rush, <laughs> rush is the only country that you could get in trouble for taking money from literally. Like the only interest you could get in trouble for entertaining is the Russian one. You could probably even get away with taking money from North Korea, though I would not recommend this. The only money that there is not is patriot money. Where's the patriot money? Where's the patriot money to represent patriot interests? It just doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. And there are so many interests. There's just this stuff going on all the time. Everybody knows about it, how much corruption there is. So you have to ask yourself, why is this happening? Why is this happening right now? It's not like every case of this is treated equally. So what's the deal with this? And it's very simply that the DOJ is looking for an excuse to persecute normal conservatives, associate them with foreign actors, delegitimize any potential for their ideas to be organic. You know, these are manufactured insofar as they're expressing, you know, right-wing ideas uh, by publishing headlines about right-wing influencer operation busted by... DOJ, Russia, well, it's Mueller time all over again. Like, okay. So it's going to be used as a boogeyman against the right, against Trump, against Trump's campaign. And you'll see all the usual establishment conservative types jumping to align themselves immediately with the DOJ against these people, or really more specifically, anybody who's expressing sentiment that is similar to these people. Uh, it's just a bad situation, very unfortunate allegations. And the details themselves are so stupid, like sowing division, causing disruption. What does that even mean? I mean, basically, Basically, that just means supporting dissident ideas. It's the same thing that we do or anybody does when they're funding or supplying proxies against their enemies. Like you supply the agitators with resources. If you have a rival at any scale, it is beneficial to you if you can support the efforts of something closer to them and their efforts to be disruptive. And again, I don't like what these guys were putting out, especially the anti-Trump stuff. I have a huge problem with all of that. But the language is very specific because anything that is outside of this like established paradigm of political discourse could be causing disruption. You know, they've been saying this for like the last 10 years anyway. And to be honest, if you actually wanted to cause disruption, like you probably wouldn't give it to pretty mainstream commentators who aren't even getting much engagement, frankly. I mean, you know, 
the content that they were putting out for Tenant, it wasn't doing like huge numbers. It didn't really seem subversive in nature. Like the kind of content that Tenant was putting out, uh, we'll say was retaining a lot of mass appeal, but maybe that's the propaganda strategy, you know, like you're casting a wide net, you're blending in with the mainstream right-wing commentators, hiring normal mainstream right-wing commentators, uh, in this case, without their knowledge, allegedly. And the trick would be to insert into that what you want getting out into the minds of the public, a certain position on a certain topic. In this case, people are saying that it would be the ongoing conflict between Russia and Ukraine, but the position on that shifted independently of any of these people from supporting Ukraine to, well, why should we be involved, to maybe even understanding some of what the opposite side has to say in terms of who's really the instigator. And that conversation took a while to happen, but once it did, you see that the logic from it carried over almost perfectly, like it perfectly translated to the Israel-Palestine conflict, where when that pops off last October, the average position is already like, okay, well, who really cares? This isn't our problem. And it's remained that way despite the best efforts of people who were probably expecting everybody to be all fired up about it the way that they would have been maybe, you know, three, four years ago, but they just aren't. And so the timing of the Russia-Ukraine conflict really was helpful in that sense for kind of completing the evolution of the Trump era foreign policy in the minds of the base to basically like, yeah, who cares? Not our problem. So these people were not really the movers and shakers of that. Um, that thinking, insofar as they were expressing these opinions, you know, they were pretty much doing so before the company was officially launched, as far as I'm aware. And Wired actually constructed like a database of all the content that they put out, tenant media, and they made these charts of the most used words, the things that were most discussed. And so in over 400 pieces of content from tenant, Russia, Russian, Russia's, all that, everything to do with Russia directly, had about the same frequency as Hunter Biden. Biden, just to kind of use that as a sort of benchmark to compare to typical right-wing media coverage, um, which isn't tied to the Russian government. And Putin's name was said like 30 times. Ukraine was said about 60 times. Biden's name was said like 800 times. So it doesn't really raise too many red flags. These people all have their own companies, their own staffs. They're claiming that there was no editorial direction given to them by Tennant or Lauren or Liam. And to be honest with you, I believe that. I know a lot of these people pretty well. And again, maybe that's all the strategy, right? Like you cast a wide net and then you sneak in what you really want getting out there. And then maybe once you've built up a little bit more of an audience and some more credibility, you like execute that. I don't know. If I'm the Russian state and I'm trying to disrupt, there's like no scenario where I'm bringing Dave Rubin onto that team. He's not making the Power Rangers. I, this guy's whole thing is like, let's talk it out. Let's have a conversation. Unless that guy was going to do like 4D chess, big brain, subvert his audience. Like, just kidding. You fool. We're not actually talking it out. We're not actually having civil conversation. Do burn this book. Do burn these books. Quote Dave Rubin. Dave, he like radicalized me, to be honest. I mean, I remember that one time when he said the time for civil conversation is over. Just do it. Just make America great again. I was like, whoa. Dave, talk about a report from Ruben. Um, I, so I don't believe the Biden DOJ getting back on topic is like capable of incidental justice. You know, it hates Russia. Cool. It's been going on forever. But of course, there's more to it. It wants to put this out leading up to the election to harm Donald Trump. And you see the media is already running with it. Kamala's down. So yeah, they have to play every card that they have, even if they're at this point recycling and it's going to be used to attack Trump. It's being used to attack TPUSA, which is doing a lot of the groundwork quite successfully for the Trump campaign um, as the Trump campaign has developed a more efficient, newer, albeit risky model of outsourcing a lot of that ground game to existing aligned institutions and organizations, which it is now able to do because of a recent FEC rule change back in March, I think. So yeah, just like with everything else, don't believe that institutions, which you know hate you always, can sometimes just freaking like do something right. Like no, every institution is just a different organ of the regime. These interests are not competing with each other, even if they are nominally separate and can theoretically check each other's power, hold each other accountable, it's all the same thing. And the official position of the regime is to be anti-Trump. That is an unacceptable position for anyone claiming to be right wing to hold. The stakes of this election are far too high, which again, we've covered already legitimately like that's our last shot before being set back decades. And equally as important, the criticisms of Trump are themselves just like ridiculous, which we discussed in that video, but we will discuss more in the near future pertaining to him supposedly compromising on issues, moving to the left, being controlled by some of these interests. Uh, it's just not true. He's only improved since 2016. Beyond the wildest expectations, the most optimistic expectations of anyone who can remember what things were like back then, and especially before then, which thankfully I can. So we will discuss these things uh, pretty soon. And also, there's plenty of anti-Trump operations being run right now, all over the left, all over the right. So if they knew that Lauren and this organization were doing that, which they were, they were promoting anti-Trump messaging, claiming that he's compromised, he's insufficiently right-wing, et cetera. Okay, well then perhaps the unique value 
is not by allowing that to continue, if I'm the DOJ, but by indicting them and adding a new or perhaps just like refurbished anti-Trump operation to the arsenal, which is trying to associate him with Russian disinformation, the right in general, with Russian disinformation, foreign interests, delegitimizing right-wing ideas, etc. That's why almost all of the people who are trying to align themselves with the DOJ against Lauren are these like interesting kinds of people who are something in between like the remnants of the neocon class, but not explicitly like anti-Trump people at the same time. They want to position themselves advantageously. They want to consolidate market share. They view this as a perfect opportunity to do so. So in this instance, yeah, they're willing to align themselves with the regime uh, and the regime's Department of Justice, as these people always do. So yeah, my problem with the content that was coming from this company and from Lauren in particular is that it was promoting anti-Trump messaging and not just anti-Trump messaging. No one is beyond criticism, but specifically messaging, which I believe is inaccurate it, low hanging fruit, perhaps to drive engagement, perhaps not. In any case, it should not be thrown around so carelessly when there's an election right around the corner uh, with such high stakes. So to be honest with you, like this all doesn't really change that. I don't really care what the motives are so much as I care about the actions themselves, though I do think that the motives uh, are probably genuine or at least not directly purchased, if I had to guess. Are the allegations troubling? Of course. Should you do business like that? No, especially not with friends. But it's not my business. I trust that they'll sort it all out. But I don't know, man. My concern right now is how this impacts the election, which really this only changes because it's going to be used as it's being used already to associate Trump with Russian disinformation to delegitimize him, which, of course, the public is already primed to believe because of years and years of similar coverage against him. So the big lesson here is that you have to guard your heart. Don't get all riled up and write people off, write ideas off because of this kind of stuff. You know, like Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, these people will be fine. But guys like Taylor, the fella Hansen. You know, his reputation, which he's already been working to restore because these people have tried to smear him for years for various reasons. Now his reputation, again, is up in the air. And that should not be the case. So the story here, I think, is that. Like, because there are all sorts of foreign investors, foreign interests in American media companies, not even foreign in the sense that we defined earlier, meaning like in contrast to the interests of Americans. Okay, like the problem is that these people were boosting anti-Trump content. And they allegedly were deceiving people into making these deals, which have now blown up in their faces. Um, and it's going to leave a lot of scars on their reputations, which perhaps may never heal. Again, I hope these allegations aren't true. We haven't heard anything yet from Lauren or her husband, but if they are true, then that is extremely disappointing, uh, to put it lightly. So the tally right now is that even if not intentional, more credibility has been given to the Trump Russia disinformation narrative. You've stained the reputations of your colleagues. You've promoted anti-Trump content. You've invited more censorship crackdowns, whether you know, directly from big tech or internally through inviting these people to keep pushing out voices from the conversation by painting certain talking points as now Russian disinformation or whatever. And the gain for that was like, what exactly? It's just, it's not a good situation. And again, I'm not saying that this was intentional or planned or that the allegations are true, but the result nonetheless is more or less this. And I don't really care so much about the intentions as I do like what is actually occurring, but still they're not being accused of a crime. Maybe that ends up happening in the future, but as of now, these are all just allegations. But if these allegations are true, uh, then I really hope that the people who were victims of this are done right by at the very least. I mean, these people are like Canadian nationals. They're not American. Like I didn't exactly expect undying loyalty to America, but I don't know, man. I ask again, where are the patriots? Where's the patriot money? I kind of find it funny that every time, not every time, but most of the times, you know, the people are like, oh, you're insufficiently pro-America. Well, well, they end up being like paid off by interest or their assets in some form. Like, that's funny. But what's also funny is the reactions from conservatives, like conservatives when gay influencers purchase children. Conservatives when gay influencers purchase children with money that originated in Russia. Hey, what? Stop that. It's like, you got to pick your battles. Pick your battles. That's the fundamental problem of life finite battles to pick unlimited battles you know you gotta you gotta pick your battles battles war and then eh, that's a segue right you know russia would actually prefer that kamala takes the white house in november putin seemed to actually like jokingly endorse her recently by basically implying that she's an idiot and so russia will be able to act with more freedom because she's totally incompetent just as they've more or less been able to do during the biden administration even though there were yes economic and military considerations between uh, between russia and ukraine uh, as well which pressured them to act it is regardless true that whatever ability they felt they had to act 
act within 2022, it would have been less if Trump were still in office. So some are saying this whole thing was like an op by Russia to kneecap the Trump campaign because Trump's foreign policy was a very successful peace through strength kind of model, which no, is not the same thing as being pro-foreign involvement, pro-foreign wars. Actually, it's just a fact that when you portray strength, your enemies will not attack you or your allies the way that they would if you are not portraying strength because they sense a vacuum, which they can then fill. Again, we've got a whole video coming up on that because people are pretending that Trump is just another Bush era neocon now, which is just ahistorical. But again, the lines don't have to be so clear. People are saying otherwise, and they're doing so because they want to forward their own interest. There are all sorts of interest groups who don't want Trump back in the White House. They all have their own little reason worked out for it. And again, the reason for that is that the only people who are willing to look out for the interests of Americans are Americans. And the only person who's willing to represent those interests is Donald Trump. Everybody else, all these little interest groups who are all aligned against Trump and only aligned against Trump because they are looking out for their own interests, and their own interests are building up power in America, having Americans foot the bill for that, rinse and repeat forever. So yeah, that the Biden DOJ comes out and decides to out like one of these doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Anybody who is operating, making it more difficult for Trump to get back in the White House is a traitor as far as I'm concerned. So the reasoning behind it ultimately really is like irrelevant. Um, you can do it for engagement, money. Money's honestly like that kind of makes sense. It's like an economic calculation. If you're doing it just for attention or you have like a grudge, I mean, that's almost worse in a way. And the language is really what's troubling. You know, people want to be like, foreign money? Ew. Come on, gang. Let's get out of here. And it's like, you're not the group leader. You're not any better. You're bad too. You don't get to stay either. Lauren is Chinese. She's from Canada. She is a one. Like, you know what? I, like, you guys are American. You're doing even worse. I expected more from you. You're supposed to be a patriot. I've got guys taking Israeli money, mad that other guys are taking Russian money. Money, and then the guys taking Arab money are like, these guys are all the same. And then the guys taking Chinese money are in the corner literally being gay. And it's like, okay, uh, will the real American patriots please stand up? This is one of the interesting things about my line of work. You know, I'll have guys getting paid by Arabs like... Why don't you freaking talk about the freaking Israel lobby? And it's like, you know, I just don't really think. And then I'll have guys getting paid by Israelis who will be like, yo, can you believe that guy? And it's like, well, you f kind of, you know? So I am paging real American patriots. Check your waistband. Code 1776. There is all kinds of money. There is all kinds of opportunity wrestling for control of the mighty USG to advance the interests of literally everyone else in the world but Americans. And you can form little alliances between factions, et cetera, et cetera. But the only actual crime is being a loyal American patriot. That's the only thing that's not allowed. Free Palestine protesters flood the Capitol. They face no consequences, even though everyone online says, well, that's the real threat. That's the one thing you can't criticize. Dude, like, yes, you can. If you build up a C-list following on any social media platform, I promise you can talk about nothing but Zionism for the rest of your life, and you will be paid very well for that. These people's brains have, like, melted. I'm sorry you haven't found the skeleton key. You know, everyone found out about Jewish money this year, which is like super based, Zionist money, etc. But the Zionist stuff is tricky because you have people putting up money who are Zionists because they believe Israel is like Christianity, the state. But that doesn't necessarily make it Zionist political organizing, the history of which is far more interesting than just supporting the state of Israel. It's usually more focused on scaring wealthy donors into supporting these groups by convincing them that like the Nazi threat is real and only they can stop it, which is exactly what groups like the ADL began doing after World War II. And it's what they've been doing successfully ever since in cooperation with various NGOs. NGOs, intelligence agencies, the FBI, the DOJ. Now, I don't know if you've ever met a Jewish person, but they kind of spook easily. And Zionist political organizing has been successful when it is able to create some boogeyman type figure who it can shove into the faces and the names on their wealthy donor lists and get them to donate money and then use that money to work against various right wing organizations, campaigns, what have you. And this has basically been a pattern every time the American right starts to develop something with teeth. This is how the left has operated for decades. And that's why it's important not to spurg out, not to become that boogeyman because it alienates the people on your side. It galvanizes the people working against you over time to work even harder against you, you'll just never win like that. I told people this two years ago. I said, don't spurg out, please. And they said, but it is in my nature. And now a couple times a month, I get accused of getting Venmo deposits from Benjamin Netanyahu. So yeah, this whole discussion, as you may have noticed, puts up a bat signal for exactly those types of people who are now against Trump because he's a Zionist who's gonna get us into war with Iran, which also they guaranteed would happen in 2017. Of course it didn't. Trump didn't get us involved in anything 
nothing new. Everything was fine. Just take it easy. We will go over that whole foreign policy record soon, just like we said. And half the people who shill against Trump are like failed Hollywood aspirants, failed musicians, whatever, and then they wash up into right-wing politics to satisfy their need for attention. Spare me your conviction. You're a spiritual theater kid. That's what you are. So yeah, you know, it was the same with the alt-right. When they had a lot more influence, it wasn't really possible to touch things like mass immigration, demographic change, anti-white racism because it immediately would be associated with like the NS LARP, but then they imploded and okay, now guys like Tucker Carlson and Donald Trump can then get away with talking about those issues and bringing us to where we are now, which is why those types of people are desired and often even coordinating with those interests in the first place, because you can make those ideas radioactive and people are off put by it. And we should know there is nobody in the world who wants to prove the existence of the real racists and the real Nazis more than our base. And them fixating on those concerns is something that would take decades to undo, and we just don't have that timeline to work with. We need their support and their resources right now. So the moral of the story, don't spurg out. Do not present yourself well and the world can be yours. And the biggest tell that I'm right, which of course I am, is the way people get so mad. John Doyle says don't talk about Israel. John Doyle just said don't spurg out. I don't understand the difference. I know. I know that you don't. So that's part of it. The other part, and for some reason nobody talks about this, but there's a ton of Arab money floating around. And I guess nobody talks about it because it's not freaking based or whatever. And maybe they're taking it themselves. And it's like, all right, well, if you want to save souls, it's probably not good to be promoting this. You probably should not, you know, be trying to entice people into worshiping false gods because they're trying to take young men who naturally have conservative instincts and funnel them into Islam. And there's a lot of this in the red pill sphere nowadays. Like, look, our women aren't like this. We're based. Okay. Uh, anyway, more importantly though, they're trying to build relationships and command influence within the right because they don't want a right to ascend, which is hostile to their interests, just as any group wouldn't. And their interests are of course, moving to Western countries, breeding like rabbits more than half the time with family members, by the way, our women aren't degenerate. It's like, okay, well, our women aren't our sisters. You know, it's like, we're going to keep score. Um, you know, they want to accumulate wealth, political power, and they just want to be just another interest group, which wants to command the USG to act in its interests. Funded of course, by the American taxpayer against the interests of the American taxpayer until the bones of our civilization are spotless, which is why literally every one of these like based Muslim influencers, they always end up denying the reality of mass Muslim migration, denying the reality of rape gangs in Europe, etc. It's like, okay, Chinese money, you don't really see that on the right too much, even though people like skits out about it. Uh, this is much more of a Democrat thing. You know, I won't say too much, but I was actually offered what you might call Chinese money a few years ago, but from like the liberal Chinese people, I was like, what, have you, uh, have you seen my content and all? I said, no, of course, the only money I've ever accepted is from patriots. And by the way, the way it works with all this is not as romantic as people may think. My understanding is that in most cases, you're basically offered an opportunity to like produce content for money whether that be through a network directly or a relationship where your media company is licensing content to a network or some entity is putting up money for some stake in the content that your company is producing, whatever it may be. And you don't receive like some list of things that you have to talk about, things you can't talk about, but it's sort of understood that whomever's putting up the money more or less has permission to set some sort of editorial position, so to speak, um, of whatever the particular content is, which isn't done in brass tacks more like maintaining communication in a group chat, phone calls, just something to like launder more or less what is supposed to be getting out there. People might actually believe it. They might convince themselves that they believe it over time, but in any case, there is something a bit sticky about it all, isn't there? And of course it gets complicated when you start incorporating and hiring and making it all official, moving money around to different places, through different places. That can expose your flanks if not done carefully. It sounds like whatever was going on in this story that we're talking about, for example, was done uh, a bit sloppily, or maybe, maybe not, maybe you just shouldn't do these things at all. I don't know, I'm not really in this world. Um, I've noticed though that most of my detractors take money from these people. They, or they try and fail to take money from these people, which is even funnier. And I'll say this, you know, people want to adopt a threatening identity, something that is threatening to our ruling class. If that's you, do not confuse what is simply annoying to your enemies, what makes their eyes roll, with what is legitimately threatening. Your model has to be something that works. If they don't like it and it's palatable to your base and you can get into power off it, now that's interesting. That's an interesting idea. But it has to check those boxes. You know, people want to just be like, and just be like 12-year-olds on skateboards, which is fine. I mean, that's a lot of fun, but that's what you are. 
There's a low ceiling for that. There's a low ceiling for what you can do. It's self-immolation. I've seen it a million times. The patriot truly walks alone. And just finishing on this, Russian money, by the way, it's like pennies on the dollar. Frankly, it's just like not a real thing in the sphere in terms of the money that actually like floats around. Um, even when they ran the like Russiagate, Trump Russia 1.0, that whole narrative, everybody they ended up going after for taking Russian money, Russian organizations, whatever, to influence the election in 2016, it was like pro Bernie Sanders people. Only like one of them was actually pro Trump. So like we said, there's a reason this came out now. There's a reason that this happened. And it's looking like Brandon's DOJ wanted another Russiagate meme they could pin on Trump right before the election as Kamala's polls are dropping. Everyone hates her, but I guess they didn't realize that Lauren herself had been amplifying anti-Trump viewpoints and sentiment, or more likely, they thought that it would just be more effective to use it to just try to like delegitimize Trump and the right by association, of course, and they knew that there would be establishment conservative types happy to go along with it to consolidate market share, settle personal grudges, whatever it may be, as is always the case, and it catches fire with all the usual suspects because to this day... They refuse to legitimize the Trump victory, both left and right. They refuse to concede that the Trump victory was actually the thing that ac like most accurately represented the will of the people in decades. The people who worship democracy, they don't even know it when they see it, right? It was either talk of Russian agents and misinformation from the left or the neocon right that it was just these dumb Americans who wanted to throw a pipe bomb into Washington because they were mad. No, actually, um, Donald Trump articulated a legitimate political platform and it was successful. And Americans were excited to finally have a menu option which reflected their concerns instead of being forced to just choke down more slots about tax policy and expanding freedom globally in the name of democracy. I refuse to allow Trump's political operation to be reduced to some like middle finger in the public discourse. He is a legitimate political figure who just so happens to be the funniest man alive. These are compatible. And even now, the people on the right who did this, they know that they can't openly get away with criticizing Trump the way that they used to. But even now, they cannot help themselves but to just take these little snipes at him almost every week. They can't give him credit. It's just a fluke. Maybe they occasionally make like the best of it. They're a bit nicer, but at their core, they maintain it was just a fluke. Americans are just dumb. It's like we talked about in the last video. These people squirmed when Trump came onto the scene and made them reveal how much hatred they have for average Americans. And nobody else could do that except for Donald Trump, could make them delegitimize themselves so quickly and so publicly. But they have to delegitimize Trump as well. So things like this are very useful. They didn't even have to indict them and they're never gonna arrest the two Russians. So the whole thing, which really kind of leaves more questions than answers. Some people online are paranoid and bringing up that typically when feds have messages and search histories, it suggests that people cooperated with them to avoid trouble and maybe they turn over contacts and act as eyes and ears on the right, among other things. I would just say that for the next two months, we kind of just need to keep our eyes on the prize. My axiom for patriots versus disloyal ours, loyal Americans versus traitors, real Americans versus citizens is literally whether or not you support Donald Trump for president. That may expire, but for the next two months, it is that. Where you stand on that issue is what determines whether you're loyal or if you're a sellout far more than whatever is going on here. Even if people want to get all riled up and get up on their soapbox, because the truth is that there are a lot of different ways that you can sell out. People sell themselves out every day. You can sell out for money. You can sell out for clout, attention, dopamine hits, extravagance, leisure, comfort. Anything that makes you compromise from your mission statement is selling out. And I think that people focus a lot on like selling out for money because it kind of gives them permission to just cast stones before reflecting on their own situation. Your worst sin is that you've betrayed and destroyed yourself for nothing. Really makes you think, right? Like I'll get this from time to time, you know, because I run ads for a few companies in my, in my videos. Okay, yeah. You've never once seen me though try to sell you like a snake oil supplement or like a gold investment, stuff like that, which I'm not throwing shade, but I promote products that I like and that are produced by companies run by good people who I like and who agree with everything that we talk about. I had a company a few years ago who I thought fit into that. They asked me to cut something. It was stupid. Maybe I should have, but we never worked together again. I have left more money on the table than my biggest critics will see in their entire lives. But last week, I had a guy see me advertising the promo for the Gladiator that Undertack was doing, and he sends me a DM. He's like, huh, Doyle the sellout. It's like, what? Your IQ is so low. You can only see two variables at a time. And so you're like, okay, wait a minute. Promo, and that's just like the generic YouTube promo. And these are the same thing. I'm very smart. And it's like, okay, I think it makes people feel good to sit back and just shoot arrows at everybody else. Like, at least I'm not a sellout. You have nothing to sell. You have no skin in the game. You're not doing anything. 
you know, I will say most of these people, they get involved because they're theater kids, true, but a lot get involved because they're true believers. And then eventually the pressures of the regime just become like too much to bear for whatever reason, depending upon the individual circumstances of that person. Um, and they end up compromising in some form. Thankfully, this is not the case with everybody. There are real American patriots working on our side, but we are still in need of more people. Not the people, not a mass movement where everyone freaking wakes up. We need to attract the right people. And nobody ever got rich shilling for the interests of the American people. It's like we said in the last video. There need to be incentives which are attractive to high-quality people who have opportunities elsewhere, who don't need to be involved in politics the way the theater kid does. Because you're never just going to wave a magic wand and get rid of foreign money in politics. When you live in a globalized, multiracial, multi-ethnic democracy, democracy meaning Literally what happens like is just a power struggle between all the different groups competing for the reins of the USG. Because again, foreign money, properly understood, is just money which goes against the interests of the native population. That is practically every dollar spent anyway. And the only thing that's going to improve that situation for patriots and create opportunities in the future for patriots and make it harder for anti-patriots to get back into power in the future, Native Americans, beware of foreign influence, the only thing available to us right now in the immediate future is to work towards uh, electing Donald Trump for president <laughs> again. So this is a troubling story. It's unfortunate. I guess we'll see how it plays out. Ultimately, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I just think we got two months, all right? You know, it's not really that much different from any other kind of behavior that we see with all the different groups who all align themselves against patriots. And in this case, especially the people freaking out about this as if they themselves don't effectively do the same thing. The patriot walks alone. That is okay. The patriot has always walked alone. It's never been a problem before. We just have to make sure that we stay on the correct patriot path. And that is heading towards 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, where we will put Donald Trump back in the White House so that he can make America great again. Doesn't that sound good to you? Isn't that a fine idea? Cool. Uh, okay, so support Donald Trump for president or else we're all literally gonna die paging all real american patriots leave a like on the video if you liked the video leave a comment on the video if you have a comment to leave on the video share the video with a friend if there's a friend that you want to share the video with who is your friend with whom you'd like to share the video uh turn on notifications so that you are notified in the event that i post content via a notification which you will have turned on prior also, be sure to subscribe to the channel so that you are subscribed to the content which comes from the channel, which is very frequent, which you would know as you are subscribed to the channel so that the channel is in your subscription feed. Um, all right, patriots. It, we'll see you next time. There's a lot on the horizon. I can see it now. I can see it on the patriot horizon. I can see the patriot sunset. I can see the patriot content. I can see the patriots. I can see the patriot pals, the patriot gals, state issued patriot GFs. The future's so bright. I'm going to cry. I can't. I can't cry on camera. I don't want to get too emotional. But it's a compelling, it's a compelling vision. Is it not? Who among us is not compelled among us? Yeah, dude, Jen, did you even get that reference, by the way, when I said, like, uh, we're aware of the Soviet connection? These post 9-11 Zoomers, man, I'll tell you, you don't even get it. You don't even get it. Um, OK, uh, well, bye. I'll see you next time. God bless America and God bless you, too, big guy. You're going to make it. You're doing a fantastic job and you're going to make it. Boom.